What's up guys? It's been a while. Um, so today I want to talk a little bit about uh, the race that just happened uh, on Sunday. Not really the race, but what happened afterwards between uh, Logano and Hamlin. And my main question is, whatever happened to boys have at it? I don't know if you guys remember, this was going back a few years. Uh, NASCAR made a big deal out of uh, sort of giving their drivers more leeway. In other words, uh, kind of be able to say what you want, be yourself, not have to worry about NASCAR policing everything you do or everything you say, uh, letting them know, hey, just be yourself and if you have an opinion, uh, you know, feel free to state it. We're not going to crack down. Um, now, I know they didn't mean boys have at it as in terms of fighting, but they did kind of market that whole idea with the sense that, you know what, anything can happen and we're not going to police these guys. So it sounded exciting, but nothing really ever came of it. And what's curious to me is that it kind of went away. And no, no one ever talked about it. NASCAR never addressed it. They just kind of quietly pushed that boys have at it idea out the window. And never really address anything about it or tell people, hey, we're not doing that anymore. They just kind of like looked around and they were hoping no one would notice. And that was that. And I always wondered, whatever happened to that? And I never heard any of these drivers, you know, bring it up or address it. So it leads me to believe that there's behind closed doors, NASCAR probably told them, you know, that whole boys have at it thing that we kind of said you guys can just, you know, go and, and say what you want and do what you want. We're not going to allow that. So keep it to yourself. But, you know, we're back to policing what you do. I, I got a feeling that they were kind of told behind closed doors, which is why you never really heard anyone associated with NASCAR, whether it's drivers or owners or, or even the guys on TV, talk about it. They just kind of all together let it go and, and, and never brought it up again and just hope that everyone forgot about it. Well, I didn't forget. So the reason I bring that up is because what I notice, and this has been, you know, NASCAR really for as long as I can remember, but whenever two drivers have a problem and they get into a scuffle, you know, NASCAR is always there to police it. And if it's not just NASCAR, it's it's also the teams, the owners, everybody. Uh, they kind of get in, they separate these guys before anything could happen. And I get it, you know, you want to protect your investment. These guys are driving for multi-million dollar uh, companies and they represent multi-billion, uh, million dollar corporations. So I get why they are, you know, they don't want these guys out there uh, risking themselves, you know, getting into fights. But I... There's something really that that really bothers me about uh, the way they go about policing all of this. I just think that you have grown men that have issues many times after races, right? And this isn't about taking sides because when it comes to what happened yesterday, I don't really care who was at fault. For me, it was more of a racing deal. These guys were just, you know, it's Martinsville. You're going to you're going to make contact, you know. And, you know, maybe Hamlin got in a little hot, lost a little control. You know, it's not easy controlling these cars. That's why, you know, anybody can't just jump in and race these cars. It takes a lot of talent. But even with all the talent in the world, these guys are going to get into each other. Mistakes are going to be made. So I'm not really taking sides here. I don't like either driver. I'm not a fan of either one. And... So for me, there's no dog in the fight. You know, I have no dog in the fight. Uh, it doesn't matter to me. You know, to me, it was a racing incident. So pushing that aside, the fact is both of them 
were kind of annoyed. Logano was a little bit more pissed at Hamlin than Hamlin was at Logano. But apparently Logano was expecting this guy to give him, you know, the same old generic, you know, apologies that you see after the race or whatever, excuse making, and he wasn't getting it. And you could tell by Hamlin's body language that he wasn't really interested in, you know, apologizing to Logano. And like I said, I don't really care for either driver. But I got to say, I get the sense that Logano is not respected in the garage by other drivers or anyone else. And even since he first came into the sport, he always had this, I don't know what it is. It's like this privileged kid that like you know that he was the next great driver coming in and I don't think that they allowed him to to really go through the typical growing uh, uh you know ma the maturing as an athlete or as a man coming into the sport because he was very young coming in and I think you know it, if you think about it he's been in, uh, in the sport a long time now he's got a lot of experience under his belt he's not a little kid anymore he's got this still got that boyish face but he's he's a grown man and they are still protecting him they still put this bubble around him and i think that what you saw yesterday is the result of that protecting that i fucking hate because these guys are grown men and sometimes you got to let these guys hash things out on their own and I would love to have seen this boys have at it attitude and just say, hey, these are two grown men. Let them hash it out. Now, there's a limit to everything. I'm not saying that, yeah, if these guys, you know, if one guy pulls out a, a bottle and just smashes the other guy over the head with it, okay. You know, there's a limit. But, you know, a, a, a little fist fight, a little scuffle, it's, I mean, the worst that could happen, somebody gets a busted lip or something. Most of these guys can't punch their way out of a paper bag. So, I really don't think they could do a lot of damage. If you look at hockey, and I, I don't watch hockey, but I've seen enough footage of fights to know that they let these guys fight, right? They don't let it go on and on forever, but they give them enough time to get a few shots in on each other and get it out their system. Then they jump in and they separate them. And everybody goes to their respective corners. Now, I don't know what else happens. Like I said, I don't follow hockey. But I respect that they allow these guys, as grown men, to just settle their differences. Even, and, and some you'd be surprised. Sometimes just taking a couple of shots, get landing a couple of shots, is enough to walk away feeling like you got your point across and you were heard. Now... I don't see that in NASCAR. I don't see that really in other any other sport. But the point is that these guys are grown men. And I, I can't stand watching when these teams jump in and separate these guys. And sometimes I really do think that a lot of these guys, most of these drivers, they, do, they could use a, an, an ass kicking once in a while. Because these guys... They get so much protection around them that they have this false sense of bravado. When you saw Logano, for me, you know, I, like I said, I don't like either driver. And I'm not taking sides as far as what happened on the track. But as far as how the whole interaction happened, Logano, for me, crossed the line. Once he put his hands on Hamlin, to me, all bets are off. You put your hands on me, we're going to fight. And that to me is where everything went wrong. Right away, and first of all, this is I, I think Logano's a pussy. And I know some of you guys are Logano fans and you could still be a fan. He's a great driver. I'm not taking anything away from his talent. But he's a fucking pussy. And he's been a pussy since he, since he came into the sport. He's been protected. And he's not the only one. This isn't about singling him out. I'm talking about NASCAR as a whole, and most of these drivers, uh, a lot of these guys are allowed to push boundaries, do things on the track, taking people out, doing all kinds of wrecking equipment, 
getting innocent people caught up in their bullshit and then walk away, you know, without any repercussions because these teams and, and all these NASCAR and they they step in right away. They don't allow these guys to just hash things out man to man. And I really, I would have let those guys, like, my biggest issue was the guy that immediately jumped in and, and, and just almost tackled uh, Hamlin down to the ground. It was his own team, but they didn't want him getting into a fight. But I'm like, you got to let these guys fucking do what they, you know, what they need to do. And like I said, in hockey, they let these guys go at it for, for, for a good minute and get a few shots in back and forth and jump in, you know, once both guys seem to have got some enough time to at least do something. Now, if one guy's getting his ass kicked, you got to jump in. But you got to at least let these guys hash things out. Like grown men. And I remember growing up. You know it was a different time. But I remember kids that. Even didn't want to fight. And their parents would force them to fight. Even if it meant them getting their ass kicked. Because that's how you learn. You gotta. Sometimes the biggest lesson, life lessons. Are fighting in a street fight. Sometimes you gotta get your ass kicked. Growing up a little bit. To, to learn what life is about and that life isn't going to protect you all the time. And a lot of these guys today in NASCAR, it's a different generation and they're they're protected. And you could tell they're they're privileged um, and they can you know they feel they can do and say what they want and there's no repercussions. And if I was a teammate of Logano, I wouldn't fucking protect him. What he did was wrong, and he needs a good ass kicking, man. He's needed it for a long time, and he's like I said, he's not the only one. Okay, guys like Kyle Busch, Harvick, all these guys. I fucking hate these guys because they all act tough behind the wheel of a car, and they always get out. They'll make a scene, but they know that people are gonna jump in and separate them, and it's all a show. They don't really want to fight. And even those of them that actually do want to fight, I, I'm not sure. You know, it's I, I just want to see them. What happens if, if you actually let them get in a physical altercation? I, I I don't. I'm not. I'm not afraid of any of these guys. Just watching on TV, I'm like, you know, it's very rare you see a guy that that I that you could walk away saying, I'm not messing with that guy. So, the, the, I saw one incident. And I'm going to try to put the link uh, to that video in, in the description. I'm going to try to do it. But I remember Marcus Ambrose punched Casey Mears in the face. And it was a hard shot. Uh, and the whole thing, they had an altercation after a race. And Casey Mears was pushing him and really being aggressive. Trying to assert his dominance over him. And he did not expect... Uh, Marcus Ambrose to react that way and Marcos socked him right in the face and nobody got in until afterwards right uh, Ambrose actually threw another shot I don't know if it was at Mears or someone else but before anybody actually got involved uh, they kind of let those two guys go at it a bit and Casey Mears got the worst end of it and Casey Mears is the one who instigated it because he started shoving Marcus Ambrose but that is an example of what I'm talking about. A lot of these guys think they can get a, get away with certain things because they know there's no repercussions. I promise you that Casey Mears learned a valuable lesson that day, which was don't fuck with Marcus Ambrose. And I saw that and I, I walked away saying, holy shit, that, that's a tough dude. I wouldn't mess with him. So I loved watching that because... I don't even know what the issue was. Maybe Casey Mears was right. Maybe he had a right to be pissed. That's not the point. The point is, man to man, they went up to each other, and Casey Mears actually got physical with him. And he got punched in the face. And it was a hard shot. I was, you know, it looked like it hurt. So, I think that sent the message to other drivers, too. 
Don't mess with Marcus Ambrose. So that's just one example because unfortunately there's not a lot of examples like that in NASCAR. Now, you might have to go back a long time ago. In fact, NASCAR to this day promotes that race, I think it was the 1979 Daytona 500 that ended with uh, Cale Yarborough and uh, Allison, you know, fighting in the infield, you know, after they wrecked. That, that's how the race ended. And it was a huge deal. You guys know what I'm talking about. And, and NASCAR and everyone associated to na with NASCAR, they promote that. Like, wow, this is one of the highlights of NASCAR and what actually put NASCAR on the map in terms of popularity on television, right? Yeah, NASCAR had a big following before that, but it wasn't on a national stage. It was within the NASCAR community. But that race and the way it ended and that fight, it was like a dream come true for NASCAR because that's what everyone was talking about, not actually the race itself. So they want to use that to promote NASCAR, but at the same time, they police NASCAR to the point where these guys have to be careful about what they say, what they do, and God, God forbid they get into a fight after a race. Now, we've seen uh, some fights or what, you know, what other people consider fights this year. Yeah, a couple of guys shoving each other and then everybody jumps in or they get on the ground. Honestly, I've seen a little more toughness out of the Xfinity series. We've seen some pretty decent fights uh, in the Xfinity. And I think it has to do with maybe those guys, they're trying to make a name for themselves and maybe they're just worried about losing that opportunity to move up to, to cup and all that boils over and it creates more of an atmosphere where they want to fight whereas in nascar these guys are already in cup and there's this sense of privilege and you know what i'm talking about a lot of these drivers they have a privileged attitude and a lot of these guys deserve a, an ass kicking and there's nothing wrong with that. Once in a while, a good ass kicking, it, it serves as a lesson and a reminder to, to people about how to conduct yourself in the sport. And the problem is now you're going to have these two guys, uh, Hamlin, you know, I guess rightfully, he didn't get a chance to really go after Logano. And Logano, he wanted to try to show he was tough, but of course, who you really are is always exposed, and he's a pussy. He did not. He didn't want to fight. He just wanted to kind of show off for the cameras. The cameras are there. Everybody's watching. So he he felt like I have to show everyone that I'm tough, and so I got to do something. And even what he did was just. It looked pathetic. It looked embarrassing. He did that quick walk away. He didn't literally run, but he did a quick, pretty quick, fast walk, and he and he gave uh, Hamlin a quick shove. But once you do that, you just open the door. Now it's like, okay, now you you're looking for a fight. So why are you quick walking away, speed walking? Because you don't want to fight. So that's my issue. And I think out of the two guys, Logano comes off way worse. Okay? Um, you should have just let these guys fight a little bit, you know? And I don't. I think it would, it would help ratings. Not that that's the main reason, but I don't know, man. Am I wrong for that? But I, I look at, I, I was watching that yesterday, and I thought to myself, it wasn't that long ago that NASCAR was promoting this boys have at it thing. And now it's like they don't even let these guys. They got to watch everything they do. And even the teams are so overprotective of these guys. That's why they are they have this privileged attitude. That's why they, they act the way they do. Because there's no repercussions. And I think back to that incident between... Casey Mears and, and Marcus Ambrose and I knew that after I saw that everyone who was in that circle 
they walked away with a definitive feeling of who Marcus Ambrose was and who Casey Mears was and, and everyone there. They know that this was not a guy, if you corner this guy and, and you, you think you're going to intimidate him, you have another thing coming. And I respect Marcus Ambrose for that. And I don't need, I don't want to know what happened on track to, that led to that. I don't even care. I don't care if he was in the right or wrong. The, the point was, Casey Mears, the moment he tried to intimidate him by getting physical and shoving him and really getting aggressive, he socked him right in the face. So that alone sent a message to everyone. And everyone in the garage who saw that, I guarantee you, said to themselves, I'm not messing with Marcus Ambrose. So, those are my thoughts. I'm just wondering, maybe NASCAR did make a statement where they wanted to just say or, or do away with this boys have at it thing that they came up with years ago. And maybe I never saw it or heard of it. You know, if, if they did, let me know. But as far as I know, it just went away quietly. And now you see how things are. And I'm just sick and tired of watching these guys after a race, getting each other's face. But you know, they don't want to fight. They're just putting on a show. And they're kind of making a big fuss as a way to say, Hey team, get in here and separate us because we really don't want to fight. And what Logano did yesterday was embarrassing. I mean, if you're going to put your hands on somebody, you got to fight. You don't just run away. And now, if I was one of his teammates, I wouldn't have jumped in. I wouldn't have jumped in. And, and I guarantee you, deep inside, if they were being honest, they probably look at him and they're like, this kid needs his ass kicked. You know. But I guess they got to protect their investment. Uh, I don't know. Those are my thoughts on that. Um, I know I don't do a lot of videos, but... You know, I... My other interests, things that I follow that I would like to talk about, um, most of you guys have already told me you're not interested in that. So I'm not going to put videos just for the sake of put it, pushing out videos. So, you know, unless there's something I really do want to talk about, I kind of just leave it as it is. Um, so... That's it for now, and let me. I look forward to your comments. Let me know what you think. Later.